If you work in the industry, um, success is uh, almost immediate because the consumer judges whatever you're doing and the buzz is uh, an immediate response when it's right and um, you know a negative one immediately. So you get that very that sense instantly with all the people that you come into contact with that it's kind of urgent. Um, there's a great passion to be relevant and competitive and in the, and in the end although you know it's money and it's turnover that's a validation for the whole process, you know, for everybody in the process. And um, that chase to be successful and relevant is kind of very compelling. And it's completely repetitive because every season you start again. You're only as good as the immediate collection you've got or how good your store looks or how good the team is. And being part of that, I just found it unexpectedly exciting. I am not personally uh, in any way fashionable. I wear a white shirt and a pair of chinos. So it's not like I'm interested in how I dress, but I am intrigued about how to be relevant to the consumer. Got to have stuff people want repeatedly, continually, consistently. And for that, you need a lot of people who are as passionate as you are I was with my colleagues yesterday. We were talking about the New Year Festival, party time. And um, we were discussing some of the, the sort of little black dresses we were going to have. It was one particular dress. Was, there was quite a few, but the one we were discussing was a beautiful looking dress. But it, when you felt the fabric, there was something wrong with the drape. Now, what I loved about my colleagues was their passion to say, OK, how do we fix that for the same price? If you get it right, that that item at 999 is worth at least, honestly, double that. Now, the minute you have that feeling and the people who are doing the job, when they all look at each other and go, it's that stunning, then there isn't the discussion. I just love that process because at the end we're producing something, which I think is really good. I work with a lot of people who are very passionate about fashion and there are some extremely good retailers in the business that you kind of admire because of their continual ab ab sort of ability to stay relevant all the time you know it and that it's that constant change you, you either see that as kind of threatening or a bit scary or you just think about it as that's what we do and every time the fashion moves on it's a race to see who gets it first um, and who gets it very close to first, but offers it at a f fantastic price. Regardless of your income, everybody wants the same thing. They want to look good. And the people we serve, therefore, it's about, can I engage you? And it's visual. It's just instinctive. You've almost got it in your hand without analyzing it terribly much. And we've got to make that feeling happen on a consistent basis. And it needs a group of people. It's never about an individual. And it's constant reinvention all the time. I don't think the people who work alongside me want to keep doing the same thing. Other thing you have to do is keep it really simple. As simple as we can do, because complexity also kills you. If you overanalyze stuff, I don't think any lady or guy for that matter, if they come into your store and they buy something, it's a massive negative if three weeks later they come in and it's 30% cheaper. I've broken the contract. The contract is we will be have the latest stuff and it will be relevant. And if I buy it, there has to be an element of trust. If these guys are selling it and they've got a, a powerful visual display, that reassures me that the brand is on message. The minute you break that, you disturb that equation. So we do make mistakes. But what we do with them is we just remove them from display and put them in the sale. Do not discount in season. We can tell ourselves there is no one way to do it. Uh, that's fundamentally, passionately why I believe in first price, right price. It's not going to be cheaper. So it has to be compelling from the start. You know, as a, as a buying team, um, as a sourcing team, the effort and energy goes in to get it right or remove it. And gradually you build up a credibility. Uh, it, your product has to be good, you know, and, and the, the thing it, 
I always think it helps us review is if we discount in season, you end up with a better result than you deserve because your product just wasn't good enough. So you've got to concentrate on why did it fail? And the pain is immediate. That season, you can't say, no, no, we put it away and the, the bins and we'll forget about it. And you have to deal with it that season. So at the end of the financial year or at the end of the, the season that you're trying to get the customer to buy from you, you have to clear all um, your mistakes, which is a sale. But I don't want to do it during the season. I want us to have all the new stuff and not to confuse the eye with the discounted leftovers it has to be compelling, and it has to be ke- compelling the month before sale as well as the first month in the season. So you have to keep bringing newness. And it's, it's not m- any more complicated. And the team were saying, we need to keep trying things. So we came up with the idea that let's see how fast we could go from an idea to putting the product on the rack. And we always launch everything new on a Friday. That was kind of our passion. So that as a buyer on a Monday, you get a read everywhere at the same time about how good your product is. So it took a simple process of, we want to be able to measure it in lots of places. And we want to be able to give people free reign just to push the boundaries a bit and really try something that would maybe surprise our customers that we would sell at. And then we put it in a really high sort of visibility place. It was just like a form of fast fashion. But it had, the whole process had to be kind of done in 14 days. That was the idea. Culturally, it was, it was far more important than commercially. It was the idea that you could really go for it and try new things. And then that became, it, I believe that made us jump faster in general. We, we got edgier quicker because we talked about it. We talked about the new ranges and, and I would say half of them were failures and the other half were very good because it was edgy, you know, you were, you were trying things. Sometimes they didn't quite come out because they were done quickly. But it created a culture of this is special. This is what we really want to be and therefore it accelerated um, our joint belief that we actually had the skills to be a really fashionable brand. And we're still on that journey, you know, you, <laughs> you never get there, you just keep getting better at it. <laughs>